It's mid-September. Fall has descended on south-central Alaska. The air is crisp and carries a hint of the coming winter. This is the time of year when many anglers set out to fish for silver salmon. The silver, or coho salmon, is one of five species of Pacific salmon native to the fresh waters of Alaska. They are an exciting fish to pursue and are known for their endurance and fighting abilities. Adult coho usually weigh between 8 and 12 pounds and are roughly 24 to 30 inches in length. However, much larger coho are caught each year in various parts of Alaska. The Alaska State Record coho weighed 26 pounds. Adults in salt water or newly returning to fresh water are bright silver with small black spots on the back and on the upper lobe of the tail fin. They can be distinguished from Chinook or King Salmon by the lack of black spots on the lower lobe of the tail and by their white gums. Chinook or King Salmon have small black spots on both lobes of the tail and they have black gums. Spawning adults of both Coho and King Salmon have dark backs and heads with maroon to reddish sides. In this video, we focus specifically on fishing for coho salmon in Campbell Creek, located in Anchorage, Alaska's most populated city. Campbell Creek is stocked with coho salmon each year. These stocked coho are raised in Anchorage at our William Jack Hernandez Sport Fish Hatchery and are released into Campbell Creek as smolt. After a period of time in Campbell Creek, these smolt will migrate out into the salt water where they will continue to feed and grow. Ultimately, these coho will return to Campbell Creek as adult salmon and begin their migration upstream in search of spawning areas. It is during this migration when anglers take to the water in search of this prized fish. While there are a number of ways to effectively target coho salmon with rod and reel in fresh water, one method found to work quite well is using a slip bobber setup. This video details how to set up, bait, and fish a slip bobber setup. You can purchase slip bobbers in, from most sporting goods stores, and uh, they come oftentimes two to a pack. Uh, this size for demonstration purposes. Today I'm going to use this. And uh, you'll buy your other components separately, such as the, uh, the weights and the split shot. In a pack of slip bobbers, what you'll find is, of course, the slip bobber. You're also going to find stop knots. This is basically a nail knot tied around a uh, hollow tube. You're going to use this. You'll also find uh, beads. In my right hand, I have the line that's running directly to my rod. Now, in this instance, I'm using a braided line. This works perfectly well with monofilament lines, so it's up to you. What we're going to do is take our stop knot or nail knot out of our pack and we're simply going to take the end of the line here and thread it through that hollow tube. I give myself a little distance. Now it's very simple to get these off. You simply push your knot toward the hook and you've got this. This simply just slides off. You can discard that and I give this a quick cinch down. As you'll notice this comes with two tag ends there. You give it a nice tight snug it up there. That's step one. Second step is to take a small bead and you're going to thread your line through the bead and allow that bead to stop at your stop knot. Now we're at the point where we can thread the bobber on the line. Again we've got our stop knot and our bead. Third step is to thread your line through the bobber. As you can see, that tag end line has come out on the other side. I'm simply going to pull that through. What we're left with at this point is the, the stop knot, the bead, of course the bobber. Now we need to add one more bead. The function of the beads is, is essentially a two-part function. One, it allows the bobber to freely slide up and down the line. Two, it also allows for the bobber to, to, to stop as soon as that bead hits that stop knot, the bobber will, of course, stop right there. Some of these bobbers do have a larger hole in the top, and without that bead, potentially, that bobber could slide right through the nail knot. Next step here is we're going to add uh, 
I've got it here at egg weight. What I'm going to do is just go ahead and thread that onto my line. The purpose of this egg weight is it helps right the bobber when it's in the water. It gives it a little weight and it pulls that bobber down. Again, you don't want to you don't want to add too much weight there because you don't want to sink your bobber. So just varying degrees of you know, adjust your weight accordingly. I typically will purchase any number of different sizes in my lead weights and my egg weights. Uh, that way, if I'm using a smaller bobber, I can lighten the weight up. If it's a heavier heavier bobber, I'm going to add more weight. After that, we need to add one more bead. As you can see, I've gone ahead and clipped the two tag ends off my stop knot here. So what we're left with at this point is a stop knot, followed by a bead, followed by a bobber, followed by another bead, an egg weight, and lastly, one more bead. What I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to attach a barrel swivel to my line. Again, I'm using braided line. If you're using monofilament, as I said, that's fine. Just make sure you're tying the appropriate knot for whatever line choice you have. As you can see, I've tied my barrel swivel here. And you'll notice the function of those beads can be visualized here. Now, the last step is going to be to tie the leader with my hooks on it to this side of the barrel swivel. I'm using a two hook setup here for my leader. Uh, you can purchase these at most sporting goods stores. They come prepackaged, tied with a front hook and a back hook. The most important thing is when you're purchasing this leader, make sure you're getting these hooks tied with egg loop knots on them. It will say on the package, an egg loop is crucial to this application as we're not going to apply the bait directly to the hook, but rather we're going to slide it through this egg loop and secure it down. With these, I'm using a two hook setup. It's important that you check your sport fish regulations for the water that you're fishing to make sure that it's open for the use of bait and multiple hooks. When I say multiple hooks, I'm referring to no more than two treble hooks per line or two single hooks per line. And as you can see here, I've got two single hooks on this line. The section of Campbell Creek that we're fishing is open to the use of bait and multiple hooks. So this is a legal setup in this section of Campbell Creek. Last thing you'll do, take the monofilament end of your leader, simply run it through your barrel swivel, secure it, and you're ready to fish. I'm going to add a three split shot to my leader. The purpose of adding the split shot to the leader here is to allow the bait to sink faster in the water column. Without this split shot, oftentimes the bait you're offering will simply float up. You don't want that to happen. You want that to be as close to the bottom as it possibly can. There's the spacing of my split shot weights. If I find that my bait starts to float up a little bit more, I can simply move these down. Ideally, I like having split shot fairly close to my top hook. The nail knot can be moved up the line or down the line to achieve the preferred depth when you're fishing. As you're fishing, I'm sure if you're in a creek, the depth might vary. So again, it's important to have your offering as close to the bottom as you possibly can. At this point, we're ready to take this setup to the water, apply some bait to our hook here, and go out and see if we can catch a fish. When I'm working with cured salmon roe, which I will be doing today, I prefer to wear gloves. Uh, number one, it keeps the dyes off of my hands. It keeps the, the stain essentially off my hands. Also, it limits the amount of human scent that I'm applying to those eggs. You want to make sure when you're out fishing that you have a valid sport fishing license on you. A sport fishing license can be purchased online through the Alaska Department of Fish and Game website at a vendor or at most fish and game offices. I've taken a clump of salmon roe here. This is cured salmon roe. I've cured this, this roe myself. And I've taken about a golf ball sized chunk here. I've opened up the loop on my egg loop knot here on the top hook. What I'm gonna do is simply insert those, those eggs into that egg loop 
and I'm going to secure that monofilament down. I'm not going to pull too hard because I don't want the monofilament to cut the eggs. As you can see there, the eggs are secured to the hook. An additional th thing I will do is I will take that hook and I will penetrate a portion of those eggs, essentially burying the hook in the eggs. And there's your final setup. This is ready to fish. When casting, you want to make sure you're casting your, your setup upstream and allowing it to drift down with the current. It might take some finessing if you've never done this before, but once you get the hang of it, it's fairly simple. Now you can see that there's a back eddy that I've I want to position my bobber in because I can see there's fish over there. In order for me to maintain control of the line, I'm trying to keep that line off out of the current. And you can see the bobber, bobber sits there fairly well. Drifts along lightly with the current. I'm watching this bobber go downstream. What I'm looking for is that bobber to either stop motion and sink in the water or just take a quick dive. Now when, I, when that does, I know that there's a fish that's taking the bait. So one way to tell if you've got too much distance between your offering and the stop knot is to watch your bobber. If your bobber kind of looks like it's leaning a little bit and dragging on the bottom, you've probably got a little bit too much and you should lower that knot down. So the bobber's floating nice and gentle down, just like that, waiting for it to go under waiting for it oh there it is all right we hooked a nice coho here you can see i'm pointing my rod upstream and kind of to the side as i'm here as i'm fighting this fish I've made the decision to retain this fish today. Now, if I did not want to retain this fish, I would have to leave it in the water and let it go. All right, great. So now that we can see here that top, that top hook with the eggs on it is buried right in the corner of her jaw right here. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that hook. All right, you can tell she's not the freshest coho in Campbell Creek, but it is getting to the point, it's um, early part of September here. Uh, I don't mind keeping a fish like this. What I do with the flesh of this is I put it in my smoker and it smokes up great. All right, so this kind of demonstrates the versatility of this bobber setup. As you can see, there's this nice back eddy right here, up right next to the fast part of the current. What I'm able to do is standing atop where I'm at right now is I'm able to maneuver this bobber setup. I've got a nine foot rod, which certainly helps a lot. And I can manipulate this setup to get those eggs swinging just in this current so again as i said you know when that bobber goes down that's when you know you got a fish so as you can see this one was caught in the by the bottom hook in all likelihood what probably happen is it was caught here on this first hook to begin with and then that bottom one because she swallowed those eggs that bottom one got her in the lower part of the jaw there Again, we're going to go ahead and keep this one. And as I said, if I was going to release this fish, I'd, I'd go ahead and leave her in the water just like this, make sure she's got enough water going through her gills. But again, since I'm keeping this one, it's perfectly fine to pick her up, take her out of the water, and take her home. Again, another nice coho salmon for the smoker.